Absolutely. Stone Rose on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkton for the last time, Indeed. I'm afraid. Yes. So, um, you know, we're gonna have a little bit of a chat, we're sewing up some things with Carl. Indeed. We're giving away that, that prize, that BAFTA bag and, you know. Playing some great music. And we're just, I mean, we're, I'm bringing in my favourite tunes. I'm bringing the Smiths, Radiohead, Cat Stevens, David Bowie, Neil Young, the classic, Steve's doing the same. Indeed. Um, well, Carl. The last time for, uh, yeah, I've, apparently, um, someone's got it a bit wrong. We're not actually away for six weeks. We're away for about, oh, so we'll be back in, uh, August, won't we? What the hell? Yeah. No, don't swear. Yeah, that's outrageous. On the last show, you have to say that. Already brought the tone down. Yeah. Cheapened it. And I think it's blasphemous as well. Yeah. No, it's not. No, hell isn't, is it? Isn't it? No, I don't think you got That's not blasphemy, is it? Taking Hell's name in vain? Yeah. Yeah, but what was it you were saying the other week about the Queen Mum used to have a right mouth on her? What? No. I don't think we said that on air, Carl. What? No, no but last week you, yeah. you were saying about ba bad language and I was saying, oh, it, you know, there'll come a time when bad language isn't, you know, doesn't matter anymore. You can F and Jeff and stuff. Oh, I know what he's talking about, Steve. Really? Right, let me explain to you, the listener at home. Um, Carl was worried about swearing and as a joke, off air, it was last week, we were saying that, um, the qu uh, in the 1940s and 50s, the Queen Mum used to say things like, and we were quoting things she'd said, yeah. like, I'm saying, oh but putting F's and C's in there, and you believed us. What, so this whole week you've believed that we somehow, somehow had knowledge that, that the, the Queen, Queen Mum used, used to, to swear like a trooper? We were doing fake quotes from her in her voice, but putting in F's and C's, and you believed us. I mean, I didn't even think, I thought you were going along with a joke, but it obviously made an impact. Carl, on. we've said this, you've got to question and query everything. You can't take things at face value, certainly not if they come up the mouths of Ricky Gervais. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry about that, Carl, it was a little, a little trick. Uh, is there any other things now that, as is you look back over these said that you've been about that I can tell you now that was a lie? Anything you've maybe queried or questioned, you, you know, you've thought, oh, that doesn't seem right, that maybe Ricky's told you? Something might come to me okay. later on, but... Okay. Well, what about Carl? I mean, it's, we we love you, right, obviously, we know that. We've, we've, got, we've got great affection for you. We look forward to this. I'm gonna miss you, really, but... And I'll tell you what, you've got a heart of gold. Now, wait till you see what the record is, Steve, and you'll see what I've done. Is it a heart of gold? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. That's why he's a bronze award winner at the Sonys. I don't get up for bronze. I don't get out of bed for bronze. No, that's a waste of our time. Pilkerton over there on XFM 104.9, winner of a bronze award at the, Sony at the Sony's. Radio Awards. The Radio Oscars, so Phil alive. Jupiter said. That's what he called them on Liquid I'll, News. I'll tell you this, Rick, I'm not used to being on a table with losers at an awards ceremony. No. I, I, I don't, I, this, I, I'm glad, I didn't want to come in to do the final show. No. You know, no. I went straight over and sat with Pete and Jeff, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I went <laughs> over Radio the, uh, 4, I went over with Paul Gambagini. I went I over said. to BBC World Service. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a lot funkier. A lot yeah. Cooler. Won an award. Yeah, won, uh, won they, an award. They swept the boards. Yeah. yeah. I don't, uh, bronze is nowhere. What was the mood, uh, what was Silver, the mood here? Silver's, what was the mood here? The mood, uh, Because the day after, because people were, I mean, I, let me tell you that, I think XFM deserved an award and I thought it was, it was criminal actually. But what I did like about, that's quite, that we certainly had the room, because Pete and Jeff, said good luck to us and Christian, that was really nice. And then someone else mentioned it. Ja some James Nesbitt. James Nesbitt yeah. said, uh, 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 XFM and stuff, so yeah. it Paul, certainly Paul had Gambon the- Paul said something about it. Yeah, Did so it's certainly- Paul yeah. It certainly had the room. And for a local, you've got to realise it's a local radio station, yeah. you know, and, uh, it's good. You, you can't compete, really, with Radio 2 and Radio 4 and But what was the mood, uh, the day after? Here um, at XFM? It was all right. I mean, I think we expected a few more, but, but you shouldn't take this thing seriously anyway. No. But, what I, did, yeah, but what, what I didn't realise, never take Rick, awards seriously. But what I didn't realise is you have to pay thousands of pounds just to nominate, just You're to joking. get, just to get into the running for an award. So you've already, you know, they've squandered thousands of pounds. No, just it's not thousands. It is. is it? Well, it, it mounts up because you pay for it to enter. And right. then the table. You've got to buy like mini discs and that to send your stuff in on. Which sure. Ends up with Sony mini discs. Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying, I mean, Carl. I'm not saying anything. No. Mm. Um, and also then you've got to pay for the table. Right. And, and the food and the drink. I mean, it's a few grand. I swore on live television as well that night. Yeah. But I've never done that before. I mean, I've never, I've sworn before, but, but never accidentally. And we, we were being interviewed for, um, and Christian was sort of like quite, you know, being a bit boisterous and he must have brought out the worst of me and I just accidentally said the F word and I apologised straight away. I didn't want to embarrass Phil Dupas. 
he was doing a good job. He does job. that himself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was thinking about yesterday and you're saying a bronze isn't worth having, right? Yeah. But, say <laughs> like- <laughs> We're only joking, they're, none of them are worth having, but they're very nice, no, they're very nice to no, win. No, bronze is pointless. <laughs> But you say that, cos like, <coughs> bron bronze is like coming last, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you tell me the name of the person who won the marathon this year? No. Yeah, but that's cos we're not sporty. But I'm listen, sure there's lots that can. But yeah. then, the guy who came last, who was in the swimsuit, <laughs> people <laughs> remember him. And no, I don't remember his name either. No, what's his name? No, no, but he was six days late. I mean, he was really Yeah, but bad. what's his name then? Uh, you see, no one's remembering either. No, but if someone said who won the marathon, I'd go, I don't know, but there was that guy in the swimsuit. Well, I'd say, I don't know, it was a woman. Yeah. She had, she had shorts on and trainers. I'm just trying to make My point is, what they will remember <laughs> is that we were losers. That's <laughs> what they remember. <laughs> they may not remember our names. Yeah. They'll just point and shout losers. We're all winners, aren't we? We're all winners, really. For taking part, sure. Well, yeah. And it's all subjective as well, isn't it? Go on. I mean, I'm not gonna moan about awards, cos you've won a lot of them. It's like saying they don't mean Jack. But yeah. at the end of the day, right, there's some shows that won awards and you go, yeah, that, that's, you know, that's worth an award. I, th I think you've got to treat it, I mean, some awards actually boost your profile or career or your cachet or everything like that. Some it's just a nice night out when it's nice to win, but I don't think you should really take any award that seriously. What worries me though, Rick, as I mentioned on the night, is that I, when I was at school, was, I mean, I, you look at me now, you probably think he's an athletic kind of guy, he's a sporty dude, you know, but at school, bizarrely, that was not the case. No, what were you, I a bit of a lanky bean <laughs> <with the laughs> It turns out, you're yeah. joking. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, um, but, and yeah, I got a silver, uh, in the high jump. Yeah. And I've done better in the high jump, right? Did no training whatsoever, did yeah. no practice, just turned up. You were two and a half foot taller than every other well, person people in your class. Yeah, but wait a minute, people think that if you're tall, that makes you easier, it makes it easier for you to do the high jump. Surely not, because I've got all that leg to get over the pole. That don't, makes it harder, harder for me, surely. Don't talk rubbish. What are you talking about? Well, of course the taller you are, the more chance you got on the high jump. To, what, explain Everything that to me. Being oh, what? Uh, are you- okay then. So, is it harder for a six foot man to step over a matchbox or a baby midget? A baby midget? <laughs> that is <laughs> tiny, Rick. Hang on. There's <laughs> something I've learned, remember? Go Going on. Back to like show four or whatever. Go on. What show is it? four? The flea can jump over the London Eye? No! No, yeah. it can jump the equivalent of if it was a six foot man. It can jump about six years high. A flea cannot jump over the London Eye. Y yes, it can. Yeah, it can. And <laughs> tell, tell, tell your kids that. Can't. Oh, but remember. Oh, a flea can jump over the London Eye. And an ant can lift three <laughs> Volvos. <laughs> but, you're, <laughs> but you're talking about fitness people and that. Remember when we were in the pub, right? Yeah. And um, your mate Johnny was in there. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. And he was talking about that guy who got done, right? Because he entered a wheelchair race. Yeah. And, he sh and there was nothing wrong with him. His legs were all right. Yeah. yeah. Now, he got done. Because he shouldn't have been involved in it. Yeah. But don't you think that really, he's really good for doing that? Because he's not normally in a wheelchair. Sure. So he's not used to how they move about. Yeah. His arms aren't as strong as the other fellas who are always in yeah. the wheelchair. Sure. He had his mate pushing him. That was Surely. the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was motorised. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give him a gold plus. <laughs> just, just, uh, uh, you know, you're taking a bloke who's not used to doing something. He does it the first time and beats the people who are at it. Well, what about that woman, though, that was disqualified in the shooting, because she was in a wheelchair and she was just in the normal, uh, able-bodied Olympics, it was just, you know, she ended right, but she wasn't allowed to rest her elbow on the arm of her chair, because that was such advantage. She was in a wheelchair and she's shooting, but she was getting unfair advantage, and they said, you, you cannot put your elbow on the arm of your Sneaky, wheelchair. aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Do you wanna play a- t Some of them aren't even disabled, it turns out. <laughs> Hold on, though. We're talking about athletes, aren't we? What record should we play next? I'd love to hear uh, that- that single that was out a couple athlete. of months back by Athlete. athlete. Let's have Athlete. athlete. Man, I love Athlete. West Side by Athlete, a track that I know you and I have enjoyed- Yeah, it's one of our favourite new tracks of the year, that one. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. More, more of our favourite tracks to come on XFM 104.9. You know, me, I was Ricky Jabez, and you, Steve Merchant, and uh, Carl Perkinson. Sure, go on. Uh, you know, as much shoot the high jump. That yeah. high jump. Uh, do you know the reason I didn't get the gold? It's, co it's faintly embarrassing because the guy was. It was just neck and neck. Me and another guy. In fact, he was slightly shorter than I was, and I was using the traditional Fosby flop. Is it the Fosby flop? Fosby flop. Fosby flop. And um, and he was using a method which I can only describe as the Superman, where he was running at the bar <laughs> and diving headfirst over it. I've never seen this technique before. It's illegal. That's Absolutely why. incredible. Is it not yeah. allowed? The Fosby flop only works because his shoulder and 
that are going over before his head. Right. That's that's they got around the wall. You weren't allowed to right. dive over because it was obviously no one monitoring that. Yeah. No Just one, the game no. teachers having a quick fag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was his name again? The the yeah. The fag. <laughs> uh, I think his name was Mr. Woodbine. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but uh, he um. Anyway, so he's using this method, right, and, and it gets neck and neck, and uh, I don't know how many chances you get to knock down the bar, but anyway, it got to the point where basically I had to get over the bar, or right. I was gonna come second. Sure. And I decided at that point to use his method, because <laughs> he'd seem to be doing so well with it, I thought, well, I'll try that then, that looks <laughs> oh, easy. Oh, dear. And ran at the bar, launched, didn't actually get my feet off the ground, just hit the bar like I was someone finishing a, a race, you know. Did the you like. have- It was so pathetic, just got just everywhere. I just wanna get this picture of, of you at the age of what, fifteen, sixteen? Yeah, yeah. Six foot five already, probably? Yeah, probably, yeah, uh, yeah. probably what, about nine stone? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did you have your glasses on? <laughs> of course I did. That you must have looked pretty and probably, sexy. Probably a small bum fluff tash. Yeah. Yeah. As well. That must have been good. That was was good it true looking. once, when you were about sixteen, you decided to wear a dicky bow to school? Yeah. That yeah. must have been great. That was during my PG Wodehouse phase. <laughs> 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 and he's not, yeah. you thought you'd be a hit with the ladies if I you thought, were more sophisticated. Well, not only that, I thought it'd make me kind of kooky and eccentric. Yeah. Like I wasn't already. <laughs> Six foot seven, yeah, god yeah. lied. Yeah. <laughs> like they're already thinking there goes a weirdo. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, a weirdo yeah. with a bow tie. Yeah. Brilliant. Does it spin round, mate? Yeah, what Because you're getting me hot. <laughs> exactly. Oh, dear. Yeah, I wore that for about, um, for about six months, and it was in school colours, because we had to wear a tie, so it's cool, but this was a bow tie. I mean, now I don't, oh, man. I can't believe it. I don't it. know what I was Carl, thinking. Carl, uh, when you were, um, uh, a little Pilkington, right, <laughs> what, what was, if you had hair, what would it be like? What do you mean? Well, what? you obviously had hair then, back then, what was the, uh, style? Um, it was like, uh, sort of, I had, I had quite sort of, uh, <laughs> fine, uh, sort of straight hair. Yeah. Right. Um, hairdresser once said to me, you've got hair of a Chinaman. <laughs> He was a wise man, wasn't he? <laughs> what do you think that meant then? Oh! He just said, he, he just said you got the same hair as, as a Chinese man has. Very straight, <laughs> quite fine. Um, <laughs> why, is, why is he telling you? I just imagine this part going, the arse was well, didn't it, sir? <laughs> do, 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 do. Do I have something on that? You got that, you have the hair of a Chinaman. <laughs> I'm sorry, nothing. <laughs> You're not the spy. No, I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> oh, you're not like that. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. You have the feet of a fish. I'm sorry, nothing. <laughs> it's not you. Okay, next. You have the hair of a Chinaman. It was, it was one of those barbers, um, it was a cheap one, just on a, on a railway bridge. I don't believe that. Go on. On a <laughs> railway bridge? <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was cheap. It was very low rent, so he could charge. That wasn't the barber. Bit. That was a man with some scissors. <laughs> yeah. Did you go? Oh, have to move you there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, back in the chair, sir. <laughs> no, I imagine them on one of those things you always see in old films where you've got to you have to pump down, 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 yeah, like a the track. Yeah. That's it wasn't as good as that. It was just a normal chair, little wooden hut, and <laughs> it did have to stop when a train came past because it used to. <laughs> well, because he had to change the signal. <laughs> Just making a few extra bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love That's that. That's Manchester for you. Oh, God. I, I oh, it wasn't him. Bernard Cribbins, was it? <laughs> I always remember him saying, do you want your hair washing? And I said, uh, is it free? You know, does it come with it? And he said, yeah. <laughs> so I said, oh, go on then. He said, hang on now, I'll just have to wash these mugs up. He had like a sink full of mugs. Oh, he said, I'll God. I'll just take these out and then I can wash your head. <laughs> oh, no. <And> that's <laughs> why. Why did you go to this man? It was cheap. It was How like much was it? About two quid. And when was this? Uh, God, at eighty, eighty eight, eighty nine. All right. Yeah. So what happened to your uh, your Chinese hair? Uh, when did it start coming out? You have, you have the hair of a bald Chinaman now, yeah. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've got the hair of a Chinaman in a box now. <laughs> 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 oh. I used to just, um, work a, work a lot of hours, I think. <laughs> That's what made it fall out. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's no, it's like not. Work. It's genetic. You can't it's stop it. It's not genetic. Of course it is. Is your dad Uh, no, it's, um, it's got more hair than me now, I think. Is your mum? Uh, Kojak's got more hair than you, Carl. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't have a go at Carl's hair. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> oh, look at his little well, face. What did he say before in that book about going bald? It said, uh, it had a little tip, didn't it? We'll, we'll go over them later. Uh, it says, uh, if you're going thin, doesn't it say, um, cut your hair short and something like that So it too. makes you look thicker. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah, we got um people are offering Carl lots of we're, we're coming up to that in yeah, a well, few, we'll few minutes. Sorry, yeah. obviously we uh, win that BAFTA bag. Shall I remind people what the competition was? Yeah. Um last week we uh were giving away this bag that we got signed by various celebrities at the BAFTAs and uh, we asked you to uh, email or uh, write in with your suggestions as to what you have that you could swap for the bag and it has to be something that will enhance Carl's life. We've had quite a, a lot of uh, suggestions. I'll go through those a bit later, but they're um some of them are quite eccentric. Meanwhile, I'm gonna play one of my favourite songs off one of my favourite albums. I look forward to hearing it. It's Radiohead, it's the Benz, and this is Black Star. Go for it. Sugar Cubes. Hit. Yeah, on XFM 104.9. Our last show. Our last show till August. Absolutely. Sorry about that. We, we'll miss it. We, we, we can't avoid it, really. We've got to go away and do some filming. And, uh, they're only gonna miss you anyway, Carl. They can do without us now. Zoe yeah. Ball's on. Yeah, Zoe Ball. And who else is after her? She's not doing the whole run, is she? Um, yeah, I think so. Is she doing the whole, the whole yeah. three months, is she? Yeah. Tell her not to get too comfortable. Uh -huh. Right. Right? Don't, don't let Big Boy Slim come in with her, because he mixes up the records, doesn't he? And ruins them. Yeah. Hey, talking of DJing. Go on. You know, I did that storming set the other night, well, uh, so, yeah. for XFM. Yeah, sure, yeah. Go on. Uh, this was down at a little club, in case you aren't aware of it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I went to the, uh, Sony's the other night. Yeah. Carl Pilkington, uh, sidles up to me. Yeah. Slips me an envelope. Go on. Oh, 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 200 big ones in there. Do you get paid cash for that? Yeah. 200 Do pounds. Taxman won't know about that. Cash in hand. No, the taxman won't know, because I mean, obviously no one who ever works in tax office is listening to local radio. Oh. Yeah. Well, so... No, the taxman will know about it. Yeah. Because I'll declare it. Oh, I would. Put it, yeah, it's going straight down. I'll do it when I get home. <laughs> do it when I get in later on. And don't write off rubbish that you buy anyway, like, you know. No, yeah. I won't. No. I'll do it all above board officially. <laughs> Fill it all in correctly. And so I'll send it now, I'll send it tomorrow so that you get it early. <laughs> so it's not too busy oh. for you, sir. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, also, uh, did you see, uh, Liquid News last night? No. It what is uh, Liquid News? I don't really watch it. It's the thing news. on, um, um, Choice, right? And it's, uh, sort of celebrity news, yeah? And, um, uh, Julian Clary, uh, was on. And, uh, they were talking about the Sony Awards the night before, which we went to. And they said, uh, Something like, um, a relatively unknown had won the entertainment award that we worked for and Chris Chern and Chris Moyles and Jonathan Ross said that, um, uh, uh, beating off bigger people. Not he was beating off bigger people. <laughs> they weren't suggesting he was- Was Julian Clary beating off other <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it said, so, uh, the people who didn't win resorted to silliness and it cut, right? Then, I don't know where the camera was. It must have been miles away because it wasn't us. Cut to me making a little hat for you out of a Budweiser box, a little dark thing, and then forcing it on your head and you sort of struggling. Do you remember that? I do remember it. Yeah. Th so but that, they were- They are always well, watching. they were filming us. They were filming it, yeah. Scary. So, yeah. That's really scary because some of the things we were doing- Because I was tying scarves around your head, wasn't I? We were- we were- uh, we, we were, were touching Carl we in an intimate way. We were gaining him up. Gaining him we, up. To make what him feel all uncomfortable and everything. Because he doesn't like that sort of thing, do you? Can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be giving you a cuddle about five to three, seriously. Yeah, we are gonna- so On the way out- And I've got roaming hands. Yeah. Do you know them girls who came up from the Radio Academy and sort of said, oh, so you're Carl then? Right, yeah. yeah. A couple of fans went up to Carl. Yeah. Uh, just- just on the way out, I said to him again, I said, look, I'm not gay. <laughs> because they were convinced I was. <laughs> That's because they- we, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we- we teased Carl that he had to go as Steve's partner. And to the BAFTAs, and they really meant partners. You know, after the show, when he was walking home, he was gonna go buy a suit, I actually said, they will, they will ask you. He went, well, what if they say, and they, uh, as we walk in, Steve Merchant and his boyfriend, Carl. I went, well, they won't say that as you walk in, they might overdub it on the television, so. He's going, well, what about my mates in Manchester? <laughs> and he said, I'm not going. <laughs> the risk of someone in Manchester Thinking, thinking that he was going good. out with you, yeah. mind you, it wasn't. It was probably right, going. Wow! Well, if he Rick, was going to see where you're going, no, if, you, if you were going to be gay, you wouldn't choose Steve, would you? No. Who would you? Who would you choose if you were gay? Uh, if you could go out with any bloke, who would it, would it be? That? That's a good one. Yeah. Um. That's a good one. He's thought about it before. Go on. No, 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 no. Of course no, not. No, no, no. no. Who would it be? Who, 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 if you know, if you were gay, what bloke would you go out with? God. Probably, uh, Jonathan Ross is all right. You gay! Oh, you, you fancy Jonathan Ross, you bender! Oh, oh bender! Rossi! Oh, oh, you've got his Jonathan. number, haven't you? We should get oh, contact. I love you, Jonathan, you! Jonathan, I love your film show. Yeah. 
You're so funny and handsome and well dressed. Rock and roll with me, David Bowie, off uh, Diamond Dogs. Another one of my favourite tracks. Cracking. Great track, mm. isn't it? Mm. Well, it's time for, um, Carl's Room 101. Carl was too shy to obviously ever do this for real, but, um, we thought that end, end the, uh, the run of this with, uh, things that Carl hates. Yeah. We, we, we know the thing he likes, we know that. so, uh, Carl, okay. We should just point out that we've, uh, been inspired by the TV show Room 101. We didn't come up with this ourselves. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> this is Room 102. <laughs> yeah, we'll be Paul Merton and you'll be Carl Pilkington. Right. right. You can chance to banish to Room 101 all those things that you dislike, never, they're never to be seen again. Will you please welcome Carl Pilkington? Alright. Who? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Carl, so what's your first, what does this represent? And imagine me putting some on a, right. on a table next year. Go on. Right. Well, first of all, right, it's dead hard to come up with, like, five things that drive you up the wall. Okay. Right? It's not easy, because there's so many things. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, picking five, it's like someone saying, pick your five favourite records or five favourite films. Yeah. Sure. It's hard, so... You know in Desert Island Discs where they, you, can, you always get the complete works of Shakespeare in the Bible? Yeah. I think you should include Ricky Gervais. I think you should always be there, already <laughs> in Room 101. They don't have to nominate you. <laughs> you, al you always go in. <laughs> 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 go on then, go on then. Right. Go on. So, so don't bother putting him in. Don't bother putting Ricky in, Carl. He's already yeah, there. He's already, I'm already there, waiting. <laughs> yeah. Go on then. Right. Yeah. First of all, right, I thought, I thought of like, uh, things that we've done in the past. Sure. And like, quotes and that, that you yeah. were talking about. Yeah. That, that, that quote that people say that, uh, you know, money doesn't make you happy. Yeah. yeah. Right, we're just, we're just rattling through some here. Yeah. That, that annoys me. What? Money well, the quote, doesn't money doesn't make you happy? Yeah, cause Why? it does, it clearly does. <laughs> <laughs> right. Without it, life's pretty dull, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Right? So, okay. So that's like a little short, short thing, and and huh. you know, then then that sort of makes you think about people with money. There was yeah. a program on in the week. I don't know if you saw it, Steve. The the one uh, posh loaded. That was brilliant, wasn't it? That was a great show. So annoying. Oh yeah. There was a girl on there, right? Who's from a from a rich family and that, and uh, you know, it's not her fault. She's from a rich family. No. It's like how posh people annoy people. That doesn't annoy me because the way I sound is because of where I'm brought up and that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you if you sound posh, you sound posh. It's, yeah. You know, it doesn't change you as a person or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's quite But true. this girl, right? Um, did you see it, Steve? I did. You didn't see it, I did you, Ricky, know. right? This girl goes shopping. She buys like four t-shirts and a crappy little handbag. Yeah. Spends about 1,300 quid. And she's just wasting it going, you know, the woman's saying, uh, Oh, you'll love these, you know, they're really in fashion, so oh, whatever, I'll probably only wear them once anyway. And it's just, that sort of thing annoys me. Yeah. You know, people with money, y you know, who have grafted for it, are good. But like, um, you know, people who, who just get money given to them from the rich parents trying to make the world. There was another point, right, where she's in a shoe shop, right, and, um, she, she's like, got these big boots and stuff. <laughs> uh, but part of the problem is, right, She's quite odd looking in that, right? <laughs> but she's got a lot of money, so she makes herself look half decent. Yeah. <laughs> Problem is, she's got fat ankles. She's got what? Fat ankles. Right. And they drive her up the wall because no matter, I mean, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's almost like God has gone, yeah, you can have all the toffees and stuff you want. You can have, like, your nice t shirts. But at the end of the day, love, you're stuck with these ankles. And you can see. <laughs> I love the idea of God saying, yeah. right, you can have all the toffees you want. Yeah. And you have nice handbags and that, but you're stuck with these ankles. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and I really wanted to get a job in that shoe shop where she was going in, blowing her dad's money. And she was calling up her dad saying, oh, daddy, is it all right if, I, you know, I'm just out shopping? I've just bought some shoes. That, that have cost like a grand, and oh. I really wanted a, a job in that shoe shop, just so I could sit there. And when she comes in, you go, "Oh, hello, love, whatever her name is. Lovely to see you here again. Got some lovely new shoes in. Got look at these nice new boots. Everyone's wearing them. Victoria Beckham, and you know all the it girls are wearing them. Yeah, try them on. Oh, you can't because your ankles are so fat. <laughs> you can't get into these. <laughs> Never mind. Here's some boots. <laughs> <laughs> she really annoyed me, and I'm not a nasty person. You're but not. She she brought it out of me. Oh. Oh. I'm worried though, this idea of you getting a job in a shoe shop, I'm I not know. sure you're qualified. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I like all the, the, that's way round it, that yeah. some people go, oh, I'd like her to lose all her money or something. He'd mm. like to actually yeah. bother go through getting the job in the shop. Yeah. And then just wait in there. You'd be too busy mucking around outside like, on some kind of trolley stuck in a little <laughs> lake. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, <laughs> 
<laughs> but interestingly in that show, I was watching that show, and at one point, um, you mentioned that her fat heels or her fat ankles. Yeah. Um, her, her, she said, I'd like to do, I'd like to have various changes to my body, I know, plastic surgery, I'd like to do this to my face, and da 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 And, uh, her mum's there, and her mum's going, no, don't be so, that's how, no, you're my daughter, you're beautiful, da 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 No, you shouldn't, I'm not gonna let you have those, da da She went, I'd love to have an operation on my fat ankles. Her mum went, yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> 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 oh, how bad can fat ankles be? I know. What were these ankles like? Well, tell us, Rick, like... you must know. No, <laughs> no they, do you know what I mean, though? Like, if you said to a little kid, to a four-year-old kid, draw a person, that's, they'd draw her legs. Do you know where there's no sort of thin bit and then it comes out a bit for your knees? Oh, yeah, and they're just ankles. Stra- It was just like two logs. People go and say, I like your new flares. What do you mean flares? <laughs> they're leggings. <laughs> Cheeky. Oh. Awful, so, you know. It's okay, so you're putting in... F- posh girls with fat ankles. Yeah. yeah okay, what's, what's your next one on room 101? Right, another quick one, really. Go on. Um, people in supermarkets. <laughs> right. What, the people um, who serve? Yeah. Ma- it's mainly, um, these, these shops you get round in London that are, like, open 24 hours, right? Yeah. You'll go in and you'll buy your, uh, your, you know, you don't do your main shop there, it's mainly just little bits in it. Your, yeah. your carton of milk and, uh, sure. maybe a loaf. A couple of balm cakes and that. Yeah. And you go in there. <laughs> Who still buys balm cakes? <laughs> right? Do they have them in yeah, London? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever uh, ask? Would you be annoyed if they said balm cakes? We don't have those down here. They're rubbish. That's happened before when I asked for gravy and they didn't know what gravy <laughs> was. <laughs> when did you ask for gravy? In a chippy. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you say? Have you got any gravy? Uh, just, just because you, you do, you, up north you have chips and pie and gravy on it. And yeah. they didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Right, okay. So that, that annoys me, actually. Stick that on the list. <laughs> right. but, um, You've got fish men up north. But, but listen, right? <laughs> you, you're going we saw a sign in the north, right? It was a little shop, and the sign said, we sell bread. And it was, <laughs> it was handwritten. It was like, there was probably a, like a rush with those people in <laughs> exactly. turbans going, uh, What's this got, bread you talk of? Yeah. Little, little their headscarves, <laughs> little women running down with their little, oh. <laughs> but anyway, these shops, right? So you go in there, getting your stuff. And you'll go up to the till, and they don't say hello to you. They they don't sort of smile. They just bleep the stuff through. Mm-hmm. They don't tell you how much it is. They just sort of expect you to look at the till to see how much it is. So yeah. you can get your hand in your pocket, give them the money. They'll give you the change, and they won't say goodbye. Yeah, so yeah. it's like they just can't be asked to, sure. to have any sort of hello. How are you doing? Yeah. I don't. I don't want a big chat. I don't want to know what they're getting up to and sure. what you know what the dad does for a living and all that. I just want <laughs> like, how are you doing? You know, you're well, right? Uh, oh yeah, th- this bread's you know popular or whatever. Uh, right, that'll be <laughs> five pounds. <'Cause> you, you, <laughs> you need to keep abreast of which bread you're selling. Well, <laughs> oh, mother's pride. It's a good choice. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, seven, seventy percent of our whole last supper. <laughs> so that really, you know, even though you know it is a twenty-four hour. I'll hour be shop, honest. I, 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 I would err on the side of silence, not not rudeness. I hate rudeness if they do that. But I, I I would rather um, I'd start to go uh, one pound fifty, please, and that'd be fine for me. Any more? What about uh, hello and goodbye? Have a good day. Not in an American it way. It doesn't bother me. I've got, I mean, I I prefer people who say have a nice day and and don't mean it to people who don't say it at all and don't mean it. To be honest, I, I'm I'm I, I don't worry about that mock sincerity because I th- I think it. No, no, it, not it that. It's just job. normal, yeah. isn't it? It's no, no. Like, I, I mean, I, I'm saying I don't I don't I, I like people who say I don't care. They say oh, nice to see you. Come again. Have a nice. Day. It doesn't bother me. But a chat. I, I, hate, I hate people who think they're the life and soul. No, 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 no. When I you're don't, going don't through mean like, like, I mean, like, like you know, if you go through a door, you hold it open, you go there, you go. You know what I mean? You yeah. expect a thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. not at all. Yeah, I, and also when when do you come in at uh, like a narrow walkway and you're both walking there and uh, I stop, we'll get out of the way and they tut like I should have. I want to go. Hold on, look, we're both in the same boat here. Yeah. And why is it me? Uh, that that annoys me where people oh, just tutting think they, they're in the wrong. They own the street or mm. <sighs> if, if if two people aren't looking where they're going, it's one yeah. person's fault. Yeah. That really annoys me. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry. that so that's it really. I mean, I know the twenty four hour shops and they're knackered and stuff, but. Politeness, just to say. Well, it costs right. nothing, does it? No. So, so those are your little quick ones, then we get on to your, your big three, don't we? Ones. The big ones. Yeah, Should you play a record and come back to that? Well, no, what do you want? I'm, got... I'm talking to Carl Pilkington on room, room 101 on yeah. XFM 104.9. Yeah. What? <laughs> New order. Oh, excellent. Do you know what I mean? No. Is, is that mad? We were shouting at you then. How loud are those headphones? Uh, 
pretty loud, but I'm always wearing headphones, so... Yeah, yeah but, but look, look, look what I'm doing, this is an old radio trick, you put one earphone over your ear and the other one off so you can hear people in the room. Hi, on what? XFM 104.9. What did you want to say? Doesn't matter, Carl. It does The it really point is, matter. it could have been important, it could have been a fire yeah, you, or anything. When, when we shout anything, you jump. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Come on, Carl. Right. Get with the program, all right? Hey? Right, right. what other things do you want to yes, put in 101? Uh, <laughs> other than us. Spiders. Right, go uh, on. I know Ricky will yeah. be agreeing with yeah. this. Yeah, all, all, all spiders, yeah. Just, I mean, not all spiders, because there's some spiders that are on the planet that don't do any harm. <laughs> uh, they clean up stuff, don't they? <laughs> what? Like a little brush. Yeah, do you mean like janitor <laughs> spiders? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, there's some that, you know. <laughs> Hong Kong leggy. Just, just yeah. going with stuff, but I'm talking about the spiders that are deadly. And, right. uh, and spiders that are massive. I mean, Johnny's mate, uh, Ricky's mate, Johnny, I mean. Yeah. He was talking about how, uh, he was in Australia. Yeah. And he was sharing a, a room with, with a mate or whatever. And his mate was having a shower. And said, uh, Johnny, just, just come in here a minute. And he, he went in. And there was a spider on the side of the bath that he said was the size of your hand. Two yeah. hands width. It's sort of like size of just like eight inches across. Um, it was that big, right? And the daft thing with that one is that that can't kill you. It's massive. It's got no purpose. It's a huntsman. Yeah, but what? Uh, uh, something you said it does, right? If you sort of walk around it and it and it thinks you're going to try and trap it, it it hisses at you and jumps at you and jumps on you and sort of clings on. That's so you'd terrifying. Be, you'd be sort of running around trying to get it off and it's just gripping on like the old stag beetle thing yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's clinging on to you. <laughs> but there is no- what I don't understand is why is that spider that big? <laughs> right. ah! Because no doubt it, it uh, only eats stuff like normal spiders do but it needs to eat more of them because it's, it's a bigger lad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it doesn't- it doesn't actually do anything. It's not like- I just- I just don't Doesn't get track, it. doesn't paint, doesn't do yeah, it, yeah. it's just getting in the way and it's one of those things that <laughs> are so big you couldn't kill it. Cause can you imagine like the mess that yeah. would make something that size if you stamped on it? Yeah. Which I'm not, you know, again, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Um, but I, th I don't get that. And then there was a program on a few weeks ago on BBC about spiders. And there was this one, right, it was going, you know, there's so many spiders in the world. And apparently there's so many of them they can't give them all names. Right? What they're saying is, once one dies out, they'll actually introduce another one. Because there's so many different breeds of them that it's impossible to sort of up make a book and list them all. Right. Well, it's like the book would be infinitely long. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a queue. They they're say, not right. trying to name them individually, are they? No, no, no. That's their problem. No, so yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just keep it down to the species. Go this on. Is, this is true, this. Go on, yeah. So, so they'll sort of go the. You know, the net gives a spider the Black Widow, right? Black Widow, they've all died. So uh, who's next? And they'll say, "Here's a red back." Yeah, and that's that's how they introduce them. So this program was going on about this. <laughs> that's right? not how they do it. No, they do do it. Okay, your point. Okay, being, all right. right. So anyway, there's this little one, right, in Australia, and it shows you some kids being dead happy and playing around in the sun, loving it. You know, all healthy and that, and you know, love being in the sun. They're playing around the pool, and you know, there's a couple of them there playing swing ball and that, dead happy, not a care in the world. And like, the one of them goes, oh, I'll go swimming. Yeah. Cause I've been playing swing ball for an hour, got a bit of a sweat. Sure. Go for a little, uh, breaststroke or whatever. And, uh, they, they get in the, in the pool and they can't wait to have a swim about. And then it pans to the bottom of the pool. Yeah. And there's this little spider just sat there dead still. Right? Sat at the bottom of the pool holding its breath. Holding <laughs> its breath! <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah! Cheeks going up red, yeah, eyes bulging. Yeah, yeah. Oh, eight pairs of goggles on. <laughs> One goes by with a snorkel. You should have thought of this. <laughs> Four pairs of flippers. Yeah. Oh. He sat there in the deep end, right? And it's, and like, he, and then it pans back to the kids having a good time, chucking a ball to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see what's gonna happen here. <laughs> and it pans back. <laughs> it's not gonna join in the game, is it? Exactly, <laughs> no. And what happens is, the kid starts bouncing up and down on the floor. Sure. Goes and sticks its, uh, the kid goes and puts a foot on the spider. <sighs> Bites the kid, and apparently, if you're not seen to, you can be dead in 15 minutes. Sorry, sorry, why does this spider sit at the bottom of the pool? That's what it likes to do. <laughs> <laughs> Animals don't do things they like to do. <laughs> Animals do things for a reason. Waiting for a kid to come along. <laughs> no! It doesn't make any sense! 
It doesn't make any sense. Well, it, that's- that's where it's it not, does. It's not- it doesn't go out to murder kids. That's <laughs> not- it's, that's not what it does. No, no, there must be a reason. Is to, to, I mean, if you just stopped when you watch these programmes and don't get involved with the music <laughs> and like, you know, the odd- why does it sit at the bottom of the pool? There must be a reason. It either goes there for protection, food, to call- it does it for a reason. It doesn't go there to wind up swimmers. Yeah. There uh, must be a reason this- is it- uh, if anyone's watching, please, if you're watching that program, I don't know, I don't know about this spider. What- what- what's the name of the spider? I don't, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, it, it oh, say. eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. Is it four. the Duncan Goodhue? <laughs> <laughs> is it- is, is it Paul? I mean, I don't know, maybe it does go into <laughs> other things like ponds and that, and maybe it does the same for ducks, if a duck stands on it. But why? <laughs> <laughs> the duck stands on it! Uh. Why? <laughs> oh, I love your brain. Probably because it, eventually, uh, you know, a kid can get like saved if it's if it's seen to in fifteen minutes. But a duck is just gonna like wander around and go, God, I don't feel well and what have you. And <laughs> it, and it, <laughs> what good is that to the spider? Because no, it, I'm saying it might kill it if it might protect itself. But it must be in the pond for a reason in the first place, or the swimming pool. It must be down there for a reason. It must have it, it must have another it, agenda, evolutionary. Wise. It can't just do it. Could it be in training for the Olympics? <laughs> Unless it is just cooling. Like, like those, um, cause on, on one of the other programmes that, that's a bit mental. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that you, one, yeah. The one, the one with the lizards. <laughs> with the well, let's not get into lizards. This could okay, take- Okay, no, go on, quickly. No, no, this is a good one. It was, it was a programme, BBC programme again, on how insects and animals help each other out. Yeah. Right, they were saying how, you know, you might think they're in an insect, but they think like humans do, yeah. and they all help each other out, <laughs> right? And there was this this lizard that um, is running about in the desert, <laughs> right? And it's going, God, it's roasting. And what it does, <laughs> it it makes a little <laughs> hole in the sand, <laughs> and it goes under the ground and it cools down, right? Yeah. And then you see one of the locals. I think it was in in Egypt or something, and the Egypt bloke comes walking along. <laughs> the Egypt yeah. bloke. And uh, <laughs> is he walking like an Egypt bloke? <laughs> Yeah. Walk what? like an Egypt bloke. <laughs> and, and what oh. he does, right? He, he's looking out for these holes in the ground. Sure. And he sticks his hand in. Yeah. And he Why does he want the lizard? He, he makes shoes and stuff out of it. <laughs> okay. Right. And you see, Cobblers. you see him walking around. And he's got about twelve of these things in a basket on his back, and they're yeah. all looking really fed up. Oh yeah. And yeah. it's dead hot, and they can't be bothered trying to escape, and they look really fed up. And this bloke's laughing, you know, he's collecting loads. <laughs> I love how he watches this, like, because they sort of uh, editorialise it and make it into like some exactly. sort of like evil play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no. but, then, <laughs> but then it was saying how this deadly scorpion that man is scared of is mates with the lizard. <laughs> And the reason is that the scorpion <laughs> goes into the hole, right? It can't dig its own hole because its arms are that big and it's awkward for it to dig to dig a proper hole. Sure. So what it does, it goes into the, the, the like the little den that the lizards made, right? And um, whilst the lizards having a kip, the scorpion says, I'll "Tell you what, I'll do you the deal. You have a kip. <laughs> I'll walk up and down this hole here and, <laughs> and, and sort of scare away any people." So the lizards like, "Yeah, all right then." Fair enough. Because the scorpion wants a little hole to keep out the sun. The lizard wants a kip. They've done themselves a little deal. The Egyptian bloke comes walking along, sticks his hand in the hole. Yeah. He thinks he's just going to get a lizard. Scorpion stings him. He runs off, drops the basket. All the lizards go running off. I love it? the fact that that is what, what always happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah, filled yeah. that just by <laughs> yeah, chance. Exactly. That's what always happens. I like the fact that the, the Egyptian bloke. Uh, has done this every day, he does it, he goes, well, okay, I've got all these lizards, um, I'll just go to this hole again. <laughs> yeah. Cos I haven't got that lizard yet, yeah. this'll be fine. No, I just, I, I just think- And yeah. when the- when the lizard and the scorpion make that deal, and he says, you have a kip, yeah. and the other one does it, do they talk in Egypt, or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so they talk Egypt how do they- how do they discuss they Egypt bloke or Egypt bloke? What language do they use, Carl? Uh, no, it's the- but it's the international language of love. But spi yeah. spiders is what you're putting in Room 101. Spiders. Let's go back to that. Uh, spiders, what, so, so spiders, spiders that- So basically, spiders that have got the poison to kill a man. Because Rick, I know- cause you're, Okay. But Rick, I know what you're- What about the ones that are just too big for their own good? They, oh, those I are don't the... understand that either. <laughs> but Rick- <laughs> but yeah. Rick, you're- you're- you're scared of all spiders, aren't you? Right? Yeah. Even the little tiny ones you find I don't like any spiders, yeah. Is, is your them. husband afraid of them as well, or? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. What are we playing here? Uh, what are we playing here? Oh, this is Cat Stevens. Silent Sunlight. It's beautiful off Catch Bullet 4 at his peak in the 70s. Silent Sunlight. <laughs> oh, 
Cut Stevens, silence and light. Yep. Um, um, Carl just had a, a funny phone call, didn't you? From someone who's telling you all about the, the little brown it's called, is it? Little brown, yeah. That's the yeah. name of the spider that sits in the bottom of the pool. He said it doesn't hold its breath. <laughs> it's got, uh, an air bubble. <laughs> I didn't think it did hold its breath, to be honest. Uh, and then, as you know, Steve was opening a, a letter we got. And it's a football song and it's They Don't Like It Up um, by the Leatherhead Gimpers. But it's just, it's the fact we keep, we keep getting sent <laughs> homemade singles. Uh, wow, that's good, isn't it? Oh, there's another one there. Uh. They're both football anthems, though. We don't, well, do we show any interest in football? Are we football? Well, well, yeah, the World Cup, we do, don't we? <laughs> You're right, Rick. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've got a bet on as well. Have you? Arsenal, uh, uh, Chelsea to win 2-1. What today? Yeah. Mm. And I've got Chelsea to win 2-1, but Henri to score first. And that's, that's something like, Thirty to one or something. Best so, luck. Yeah. Best luck. Cheers. Brilliant. Right. So spiders. That's the first one we went on, isn't it? So you rude people in supermarkets. Rude people in supermarkets. Spiders that are either can have got enough poison to kill a man or are unnecessarily big. Yeah. Yeah. Go on then. Right. Good. Going well. Right. Uh, next one. Yeah. Stars in their eyes. <laughs> Blimey, it's a popular show. Can't you might alienate stand a lot of people. It. Um, what, uh, what, I just. I think if you've got a talent, right, um, there's loads of shows now that you can go on and make a killing. Yeah. Like Pop Idol. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Pop Stars. Yeah. That sort of thing. So, people who will go on Stars in Their Eyes, they, they want to sort of be famous. Yeah. Um, they want to be a singer. What I don't understand is why go on that show where you do all the hard work, got to do all the graft. Yeah. Uh, and yet, even if they win it, you never see them again. The guy who won last year, uh, Christy Berg. Ian right. Moore. Ian Moore. Before last. But I was now with his own stuff. Yeah, but, <laughs> alright. <laughs> <laughs> How did he say that sold well? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't well, get it. What I like is when, uh, someone doing Edith Piaf, like, wins a heat, and, uh, Matthew goes, well, I don't think you'll be going back to the, uh, cleaning job, will you? Yes, you will. Monday. <laughs> Almost certainly. Monday. She'll be back there Monday. Just yeah. Uh, and, and just the way, you know, in like the final last week where the guy who was Elvis won. And they're I all thought he there. would though. I thought he was very good. No, he was good. Uh. But will we see him again? Do you know what I mean? Uh, what, what is his job? I don't know. It, he'll be carrying on doing that. There's, there's, there's gonna be no change to his life whatsoever. He's very good at what he does, but he's wasting his time on stars and the eyes. <laughs> so what's- I don't understand exactly what your issue is. You, cl you clearly like the show because you watched the final last week. He thinks- he, I, You I think agree think that people are talented. You think it's a waste of talent to go on stars and eyes because it's not a vehicle to be famous, whereas something like- Pop Idol. Yeah. Pop stars. Even yeah. Big Brother. Do you know what I mean? Go yeah. on that. Sit in a room all day, have a month off work. Because they're all- because they're all big stars now, aren't no, they? No, no, but what I'm saying is- it's less work to sit in the Big Brother house, now and again just sing a song, and people go, oh, isn't he a good singer? You come out after having a, a month's rest or whatever it is you're having there. Yeah. You come out and there's loads of record companies, like, waiting for you to come out and give you a deal. And what happens then? When and you get a deal, when you cut a record, what happens to that record then? Then it either sells or it doesn't. Uh, and, and actually, what happened to it? Uh, it didn't, it didn't sell. No, none of them did. But what I'm saying is, that is a lot easier to do than to all the graft that you have to do on Stars in the Rise and the pressure. What would you rather do? Buy Craig's Christmas record? Yeah. Or, um, Ian Moore's, uh, classics? Probably Craig, just because the guy on Stars in the Rise really thought he was better than Christa Berg. When he was singing and- well, I think I'm better than Christa Berg. <laughs> <laughs> no. He was singing and Christa, Christa Berg came walking on. Did he cry? And he didn't stop and go, oh, I can't believe it, my big fan. He was sort of carrying on, like, don't interrupt me, I'll have a word with you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you think he should show the man he's actually making a little bit of living off? Yeah. Emulating. A bit of respect. A bit more respect. And the most annoying thing- I imagine them arguing, resting each other on the floor, saying, I'm Christa Berg, no, I'm Christa Berg. Like two ventriloquist dummies, mm. just having a fight in the dressing room afterwards. Yeah. But the, the most annoying thing of all with stars in their eyes, people who go on, and do people like, um, say like, I think, I think last, <laughs> last year, someone went on and did Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> if you wanna, cause the, the whole idea is with Stars in the Rise, <laughs> you get work off the back of that show by like companies, don't you say? Yeah. Let who will we book. Yeah. You could get the real Lamar for about 30 quid. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so why, why have an imitator? <laughs> well, it seems to me, though, Carl, the problem is that show's been running so long that all the big names have already been done, so it's gonna end up having to be, isn't it, Lamal or some yeah. old kind of fifties singer you've never heard of? Isn't that the problem? I remember when- I mean, uh, it's just an- it's just a- Eddie just Reader a, was yeah, on there, yeah, there was a yeah. movie Eddie Reader. But it's uh, just a karaoke contest. It's just- it, I yeah. don't think- I think you're assuming that everyone on there wants to get, uh, yeah, you know, a recording they do, contract. They do, Steve. Okay. In, in that bit at the back where they say, uh, and the votes are coming in, let's have a look at the tension now that's going on. And they sat there and they really think they are Elvis. <laughs> and they are Luther Mandross. <laughs> <laughs> sat there and like if, if they were all sat there having woke a laugh, up this morning looked at your picture just to get me started <laughs> filth if they were all sat there sort of thinking oh god this is a bit of a laugh in it but they're not you can see that they all really want it and it's like but so what i'm saying is who are you putting in room 101 are you putting in the people who are just there to have a bit ev of fun everyone involved in that show <laughs> including kelly yeah he's a talented guy you yeah. don't care no, he's, he's, going in, he's well. in there first, and then everyone else, everyone who enters it, the people who go and sit in the audience, everything. But it what would you do Saturday night? You'd love the show, you watch it every no, week. I, it was just on when I was getting ready to go out, and there's nothing else on at that time. Sure. And it was the final on Saturday night as well. Yeah, you gotta watch the final, you know, yeah, like final, really? the final. Yeah. Well, who would you do if you went <laughs> on the show? Moby. I'd probably do. Ooh. It's not. It's not that you look like them, though, is it? No, you say like they wouldn't let me on as Tracy Chapman. I was furious. That's annoying. Because I sound just like her, but they said, no. Bowie. Bowie. You do Bowie? Yeah. Can I hear your impression? No. Nope. Well, come on. No, no, because you just said if you could go on and, and what have you, I'm, I'm saying that. Well, it's gotta be someone you can do. I mean, obviously I'd go on as Will Smith because I can do the rapping. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not a good singer. I've never, never really been into singing. I've never done a live singing thing before. Haven't you? No. no but if you, if there was a talent, if there was a talent show, if there was a talent show on. What did you do? I did Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bengals and I mimed, dressed up as a woman. <laughs> Uh, it was when I was still going to school, so it was like. Well, I hope so. Twelve. And what? Sorry, what was the? What? Why did you do that? What did you mime to? And why were you dressed as a woman? <laughs> Where's the logic in this? Is what I'm saying, Carl. What? What sort um, of act was this? I was think, it? I think <laughs> I was meant to get hold of some like Egyptian outfit. <laughs> Couldn't. <laughs> so I looked in my mum's wardrobe <laughs> and I had a dress. Dress, got, dress and a fez, carrying got, some lizards. That'd do it, wouldn't it? I had some boots and a wig on. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you dance? <laughs> Look, he looks confused! He's, he's suddenly confused by his own act. He's suddenly confused! The best bit was a also, it was like a, a proper talent show. Do you know where you'd cover it all? Yeah. So I did like the dancing and the miming, and then I also did a bit of magic, <laughs> right? Where I had like a cloth, <laughs> right? And, and I had it over my hand like that, and, and the crowd were like, oh god, what's he gonna do? <laughs> 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 of course they were. Go on, and what did they- and what was the trick? They were playing that! <laughs> the crowd going, oh, what, what's the great- <laughs> That's one chorus. Ooh, what's, Ooh, what's he what's gonna the, do? Oh, what's the great Pilconi <laughs> gonna do? So, oh. so, so what I did was, <laughs> I stood there teasing them, and um- Teasing the audience? Yeah. Yeah. And I pulled the- I said, I'm gonna- I'm gonna make a, a bird appear before your very eyes. <laughs> okay. And I pulled the- the tea towel <laughs> off, and I just had hold of an egg. And I said, oh, it isn't born yet. <laughs> they loved it. They? He's so they proud it. of that! Look at his face! Did you come up with that yourself? Yeah. Did you have any help at all? <gasps> no, no. So, not, you oh, did oh, walk like an Egyptian and dress as a woman, then you did the egg trick. And yeah. Then, and then I was also playing like a, a janitor. Because when the next person was singing, <laughs> I'd come on and all the electric went off. And, uh, I came on going, oh, God, has anyone got 50p for the meter? Oh, you're quite a little show, showman, weren't you? And then like, you know, the did you win? chucked- chucked us some money. Yeah. And, uh, Are you sure you weren't actually employed as the janitor? <laughs> <laughs> no, did you win? No, I think we came second. Some- this- this really tarty girl who did Madonna, like a virgin. And I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like you are. She's a right ropey little woman. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> so great! <laughs> oh, oh, okay, really. so Spider Stars and Eyes, we better play a, a track, hadn't we? Oh, indeed, yeah. Bit of Tom McRae, this was a track we played a while back, I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Bad one boy, once around the block. Classic, a retro cut. Getting a bit sad now, Steve. Twenty minutes. Indeed. You're right. I've got so much to say, I've got so much to leave people with about Carl, about all the things he's... He's done. Looking back, Carl, do you remember when I put up the waste paper bin on your head? <laughs> oh, classic, classic yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that? What did I do to you today? Well, you tried to bring the same memories flooding back to me by putting the same grotty bin on my head. But the annoying thing was, <laughs> last time I did it, it was quite a new bin. Yeah. Did it today? It's rank all yeah. sorts of stuff on. What it. else did I do when I saw you go around the corner down there? Go on. 
I went- I went to get the paperwork and that that you need to produce the show. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> came around the corner, Ricky was sort of hiding, and I was concentrating, reading <laughs> stuff, and he goes, <laughs> I don't imagine it was as soft and gentle as that, I imagine it was more like, <laughs> exactly. Like that. And he- I tell you what, I nearly exploded, cause he's sort of hot on one leg, right? <laughs> and then, he was- <laughs> <laughs> he's sort of, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but he's sort of was walking like that and we're looking down and I went, ah, and he got like that and he's like, <laughs> Uh, rest assured, listeners, that if you were here, it's not any funnier than it is if you were listening at home. It's only amusing to Ricky. <laughs> oh! It, it makes you feel really refreshed. <laughs> what he, a he was going on and having a heart attack like that. And I was, I was only having a heart attack laughing. And he went, I feel good now. He said, I can see why people skydive. <laughs> 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 he said, that'd be good for people that were ill. Oh, Jeez. Carl. They've, oh. They've, they've made it feel fresh. How am I gonna, how am I gonna live without Carl for 14 weeks? Oh, you'll find other people to irritate. Oh, dear. Okay, so, uh, right, well. Um, we got this, this final entry in Room 101, but we've also, um, had m uh, so many emails and letters about this competition, people trying to bribe you with things. I've been great. Can you read a few of them all? Absolutely, yeah. Well, obviously, this is, uh, people are trying to win this, uh, bag that we got signed at the BAFTAs. We got Graham Norton, Angus Dayton, Alan Davis, Jamie Theakston, Paul Whitehouse, Baxendale, Helen, Steve Filmich and McFadden, Peter Davis and Simon Peck, Steve Rutt, all different people signing the big bag. Do you know what I think, though? Go I on. don't think people want that. I think they want to contribute to Carl's existence. Well, this is I what really genuinely think that Carl was sort of, you've, 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 you know, you've only been how long have we been doing this now with you, sort of like, you know, in the area? Three months? Yes. Yeah, I think you've, I think you've touched people's lives, Carl. I don't think I've ever met, well, I haven't met you, but it's, it, I think your soul comes across as like a cross between, I'd put it, it's like a cross between a cat. And yeah. Rain Man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, we've had quite a few which are, uh, a sort of, which obviously wants to kind of further your education. Obviously, when we're off air, this is something we, we're, we're wired that's just going to dry up, you know. And, and we've tried hard to educate you. So, lots of books, a lot of people suggesting books, um, the giant book of mysteries. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you chose this one, Carl, it uh, tells you um, how 3,000 Japanese soldiers literally vanished overnight. Real life accounts Ooh. of vampires. Uh, the man who planned his own crucifixion. Oh, the famous Carl. Ghostbuster, Harry Price. Oh. Um, and Ooh. lots of uh, things it, about spontaneous combustion. Is this like. the one about the woman with the hairball? That's not got the woman with the hairball in there. I'll have see, to do that one out for you. These sort of books are the thing that I'm after. This is what well, interesting I've, I've, is. I've brought in one as well. It's a, it's a, a, a friend who works with um, Jane, my girlfriend, called Liz, and she wants to put this forward. And this is trade secrets: everything you will ever need to know about everything. And it's just like little tips. You know mm. what I mean? But there's yeah, so many it? things competing with that. You see, there's, there's another guy you sent in. He wants to give you uh, a video entitled "Making Love Parts One and Two: An Instructional Guide." I mm. imagine you'd enjoy that, Carl. No. No. Nothing they can teach you. Nah. <laughs> sure. Uh, the Reader's Digest book of strange stories and amazing facts again, and other stuff here. Why cats have nine lives, Carl? Well, hang on a minute. Why meteors are likely to destroy Earth in the next hundred years? You're wasting your time. Okay. In this, in this trade secrets book, yep. listen to this for a tip. Make a necklace from electrical wire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. But don't plug it in. What about- <laughs> <laughs> say that. <laughs> what about this then, Carl? Because, <laughs> oh. obviously we're concerned that you didn't get your GCSEs or you didn't get as many as you'd have hoped. There's yeah. a guy here, this is Victoria, and she's saying she's more than willing to give you all of her awards and certificates. She's got six GCSEs, six A's and four, she's got many GCSEs, in fact, six A's, four B's, three A levels, and a master's degree in philosophy. She's willing to give you those certificates. She says you will be the proud owner of qualifications. As the owner of qualifications, she has found that anything she says is invariably believed and that she's popular and very happy. She's yeah. willing to give you those qualifications. That's pretty impressive. You can claim they're your own. You have to change your name to Victoria, but other than that, I can see no problems. Yeah, and you have to put a dress on and yeah. a fez. It's nice. <laughs> More like an Egyptian. <laughs> But you see, there's lots of educational ones, then there's other things which are perhaps less useful to you. Um, this is, uh, doesn't, doesn't say who it's from, but, uh, I think it's Ruth, and she's happy to give you a statue of an ostrich that she made when she was seven. What about that? Hey. Alright, you love birds, you love animals. Yeah, um, apparently it's a statue. Apparently, the legs fell off under the weight of the body, <laughs> so now it's just a legless ostrich, but even so. Yeah. Even so. I've only got a small flat, mm. Sure. Another woman here, she, uh, this is- I doubt uh, if it's ostrich size. Yeah, it's- it's just clogging up space though, isn't it? This okay. is Lauren. She's willing to give you some of her handmade blue tack animals. She makes animals out of blue tack. She can give you an elephant, a seahorse, a tortoise, a pig, a butterfly, a fish, snail, even a stegosaurus, or anything you choose. 
See, I've got, I've got my art set on- You've got on, the books, you're excited by the books. Book. What about this, though? This is a Lego alarm clock with a little Lego man who's got a variety of hats. It says here, including biker's helmet and cap. Two, I think, of the village people. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Carl, if again, people are picking certain things up. A clear stiletto mobile phone holder with pink fur on it flashes pink and green. I, I think, think people know that you are not listening. In this you book, okay. listen, right? In this book, little tips and stuff. It's one here about if your dog keeps nicking a remote control. Sure. The way to get it off it, ring the doorbell. Right, so you gotta get off your chair. <laughs> Go and ring the doorbell, <laughs> so the dog goes, what's that? And it dro- <laughs> it, it, jo it drops the remote control, goes running to the door, yeah. you, you run back and pick it up. I love the idea of Carl doing that, and then the doorbell goes, and Carl drops it and goes, and it's the dog pressing the doorbell, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sits back down, and Carl going, oh no, not again. <laughs> I, I mean, I really do want- can't I just have this? You're excited by that, are you? It's brilliant. What about this one, though, that you mentioned? This is, uh, a book which has got all those, um, urban legends and stories that you've read on the internet and it tells you whether they're real or not. This has got the one in there, I know you're very excited about the one with the woman who stuck her head in the microwave. Yeah. Eh? Alright. It's not- Alright, so basically that she's saying here that whenever Ricky says, oh, it's not true, you can dispute- dispute that with your- your book? Yeah. yeah. What do you think then, Carl? Do I have a think about all these gifts There's and then- so much stuff, isn't there? Should you play a record and then come back? <sighs> Can't have you found something you like in there? You're I so undecided, Carl. I really like this book. Go on, what is it? What have you else you found? What tip? Uh, God, there's loads of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, let's just, let's just pick one at random. Don't be too tidy. Leave some areas for hopeful, helpful garden animals to hide in. So when you're cleaning your garden and that, you know, it might look a bit of a mess, but think about the, the animals that are walking about at night in the uh -huh. dark and stuff. Yeah. Just little things you don't think about. Yeah, because they're pointless. Little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. then we'll just play a record. Oh, there's so many to decide on. Yeah. Alright, what are we playing, Steve? This is something, um, from a little compilation that came free with a magazine called Comes With A Smile. It's a good little magazine. And this is, b uh, by Matt Pond, PA. It's called Night's End. It's not... I suppose it's a little bit of New Country, which we don't play often, but, uh, there's some nice tracks no, floating about. Nice. And that's, uh, Matt nice. Pond, PA, Night's well, End. Well, I'm getting very... Sad now. Ten minutes to go, mm -hmm. and so much to cram in. Now, thing is, Carl's fallen in love with that book, but I feel a bit bad letting a friend sort of win when all these lovely people, these regular listeners. So I don't think you can have that. But I'll tell you what, I, I'll get. I'll, no, no, I'll borrow that or I'll buy it for you, so you can have that anyway. What, what? Have That's you found safe. There? You're going home with that. What know, have you avoid washing up by boiling the bag food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I could see why he'd love that. <laughs> exactly. Is there anything out? What, uh, uh, what? What other things have you caught your eye though? Put that um, book down. Yeah, go on. Go on. Um, well, well, one of our regular listeners who actually wants the bag and wants to be part of your life, come right. on. Well, Richard emailed in, right? And yeah. he's got a book, which is similar to the one I like there. Yeah. Which has got like 180 stories in it. Um, so, I mean, most of them are like true, I think. Do you know, do you know I was telling you that story about the woman who put her, her head in the oven <laughs> to, to dry, to dry her hair? Yeah. Cause she liked the way- and she boiled her brain. Yeah, she stuck it in a microwave. Avo avoid washing your hair by boiling the brain bags. <laughs> so she put her head in the microwave? Yeah. And boiled her brains? Yeah. And boiled her brains. Sure. she thought she'd get the same result as she did from the oven, but it all went wrong and that. And what do you mean? She used to dry hair in the oven? And she just like went modern? Apparently it's like what punks used to do. You can get- you get a different sort of heat off an oven than you do off a hair dryer, right? Sure. So, um, she thought, well I'll do it in half the time, use a microwave. Sure. She- Busy, she was busy, I she was late. I don't understand how you can get your head in a microwave. It only works when the door closes. Yeah, but you jam the little thing, don't you? Well, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't tell- I don't think it's possible, but don't- Of course it is. Yeah, well, well anyway, don't but do that. But he remembers that story and said, I've got a book full of stuff like that. And, um, he sort of sums up a little story that's- that's in the book about this girl who, uh, she had long hair, right? And, uh, she used to always mess around with it. And, um, she's sucking on it, do you know, like how girls- girls do with the, with the long hair, they sort of yeah, mess yeah. around with it and stuff. Yeah. And she's sucking on it all the time. And she was doing this from the age of like ten. Mm. And then, I don't know, she's probably about thirty odd. And uh, <laughs> she's doing this all the time. Guessing. And uh, she goes, oh god, my belly's hurting today, mum. And she goes, oh, what's wrong with you? She says, I don't know. You're thirty. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so she goes to the doctors and the doctors do an x-ray and nothing's coming up and it's like, I don't know what's wrong with you, you know, you're just being a bit moany about nothing. She's <laughs> like, no, honestly. He's <laughs> a very intolerant doctor. <laughs> yeah. She said, this is- Piss this off. Is, <laughs> this is, this uh. is really hurting, I don't know what's up with it. So anyway, they, they found out some sort of system of, uh, looking at what, what was going on. Yeah. 
Well, no, X rays. No, it wasn't X ray because X ray didn't show it up. Okay, it was something else. So uh, anyway, it's only gone and turned into like she's been sucking her hair for so many years sure. that little bits had come off. Sure. She's got a giant air ball in her belly. Wow! Right. Yeah. Which was like huge, the size of a rat or something like that, right? The size of a. <laughs> it's like so that. interesting what he chose. Yeah. The no, size right. of a rat. No, no, no. Well, the funny thing is, when when they eventually got it out, yeah. the, the mum was like, you know, like, oh God, it was terrible. And that's, she actually said, it looked like a dead rat. Oh. Right. And it was in her belly, and that's like what was causing all the pain. Sure. And apparently, your, your belly acids don't, um,. Uh. Don't don't kill hairs because he's so fine it can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, right. I so you go for that book, Aya. Who's yeah. the winner then? Who's the winner of the the lovely BAFTA What's bag? His name, Richard Scholar, is it or something? Yeah, Richard. Uh, yeah, Scholar or Scowler yeah. or something. Else. So he's the winner. So check it out. You're going to get that book coming to you. I'll get. I'll borrow this book but, for but you. I need oh. an email within like five working days to sort of. So what's your this? email? It's. Carl dot Pilkington at yeah. xfm.co.uk. Okay, lovely. I want an email from this guy, oh. and I won't be sending the bag out until I receive the goods. Okay, <laughs> right, Fair good. Enough. Well, we've only got a few minutes. I want to play Swade, and I want to end with the Smith track. So let's let's play this. What is it? Swade, stay together. Lovely track. <laughs> My favourite tr Swade track of all time. There. Well, we 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 oh, that's nearly it, Carl. Right, what's your last room one oh one? Oh God. It was, uh, holidays. Holidays. Well, you want to put holidays in Room 101? People who are sort of annoying on holiday. Oh, yeah. Do you know when you go away? Oh, yeah. It sort of touched on this before. Is it? Is this gonna be the Scouse guy? Yeah. Go on. Oh, it's so long, though. I mean, it was holiday when we went to Tunisia. <laughs> and the Scouse have pissed you off. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the annoying thing was, you know, when you go on, on, uh, it was a cheap holiday and, like, the lesson here is, you know, if you want a good holiday, you gotta, like, spend some money. Yeah. And we didn't on this one. We spent about, I don't know, 400 quid for two of us for, like, a month or something ridiculous. And we got there and, you know, you, you get to the hotel and you go, we have made a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's a ropey hotel. Um, you know, you can tell, like, the blinds and stuff as you walk in, they're all dirty and stuff, you think, well, let's make the most of it, you know, let's not, let's not get down about it, it's, it's a holiday, it's sure. for a rest. And <laughs> you try and make the most of it, and we had to meet, do you know, like, you have one of those things where you get to your destination and the rep says, right, you know, go and unpack your bags and that, go and sort yourself out in the room, and, uh, tomorrow morning we'll meet up at ten o'clock, and I'll go through, you know, the the best sort of place to go for camel rides and, uh, you know, the best <laughs> deals I can get you. That sort of thing. Can anyone here walk like an Egyptian? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, she says, uh, right, tomorrow morning, meet ten o'clock in the discotheque. So, we get up and we have breakfast and it wasn't a good breakfast. Uh, the kitchen was, like, bit, bit horrible, the food wasn't good and it was run by sort of midgets. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it was run? There Not was, there's anything wrong with that. There was little fellas running around and the annoying thing was one of them sort of started to fancy my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> But How did he manifest his, his affection? No, for you're it? not saying there's anything wrong with midgets, though, are you? Just no, saying no, it was no, strange. There was yeah, but even midgets shouldn't be cutting on on Carl. <laughs> no, I know, I know, no. But it's also that thing of the, you know they've got little fingers and. I don't and it's oh sort of God, I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm not. Th it's, it is a bit of a phobia of mine. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They are nice people and that. Sure. Um, oh, God. But the annoying thing is- So what was he doing then? How did he- I don't understand how he was chatting up your girlfriend. Was he crawling under the table so you couldn't see? He just kept- <laughs> whispering, <laughs> whispering to her from underneath there. <laughs> Stop it! Just, you know, Wait, I don't want to get a complaint on our last show. Oh, There's not many oh. midgets. What's gonna happen? Can oh. we just finish this and start up again in a couple of months? Oh, yeah. So if you want to more, know more about the midget theme <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> then <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll talk you in, we'll talk you in three months. Yeah. It's just, oh. it's just, it's no, just that's nice. fair enough, actually. Oh, no, yeah, no, right, sorry Carl, about that's this. Listen, um, uh, we'll see you in about a really, um, it's been a pleasure, truly, and thank you for I've everyone that got, wrote letters. Have you really? Hey, I've got you both a present, right? Oh. oh. I got Ricky, um, do you know how, like, we've done fables and yeah. stuff? Right? Yeah. This is like Mr. Ben. Oh! This is brilliant. Yeah. Right? And it's like little fables that Mr. Ben goes on. Oh, fantastic. So <laughs> I want you to t learn something from that for when you come back. Okay, brilliant. That's I, lovely, I'll tell Carl. you one of the stories I read this morning. It's brilliant. In fact, <laughs> when you've done with it, yeah. give it me. Yeah. Because I, I haven't finished reading that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And for Steve, <laughs> a little, uh, 
Oh, chat up lines. A little book of chat up lines. That's fantastic. That's Thank. Um, well, we'll see, we'll see you, um, in three months, but currently the man and Carl cherish Carl Pilkington. He sits in a little room by himself, so keep him in touch, and we'll see you in, um, August. I'm, uh, we're gonna leave you with some of the, um, we all, we all love. This is, uh, There is a Light That Never Goes Out by the Smiths. Very apt, I think. Goodbye. See, see you later.